approach the podium in <laughs> our pledge of allegiance and invocation. Please stand if you choose to join us. Where are we going? We come to tell you thank you, Father God, that last night was not our last night, Father God, and you walked with us all day long, Father God. You kept us from all harm and danger, Father God, and we just want to thank you, Father God. We ask, <coughs> we ask you to bless this town, Father God, starting from the mayor on down to every individual person, Father God. We ask you to reach out and touch them today, Father God, and supply every need that they got, Father God. I ask a special prayer today, Father God, for the police department, Father God. I'm asking that you move on them. You keep them safe, Father God. And when they get off the duty, Father God, I ask that you erase their memory of the thing that they had to go through that day, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I ask you to move on the fire department in the same manner, Father God, as our ESM goes through stuff, Father God, we want your hand of protection to be around them, Father God, for their life matters just as much as our life, Father God, and we can't make it without them serving us as we serve them, Father God, so we give you all the honor and the glory, Father God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Alderman Thank you, Mayor. I want to add uh, resolution to new business. Resolution 2024-8. A resolution of intent to consider an ordinance amending the town charter. Okay, that will be added to new business item uh, B. And everything will follow subsequently. Are there any other additions or deletions? Hearing none, I will now call for a motion uh, to approve the agenda. Alderman Palacios? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem? Aye. Uh, Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries unanimously. We'll now um, approve, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent items, which are the draft minutes of our March 11th, 2024 regular meeting and our town attorney, town clerk, and town manager's uh, self evaluations and employee evaluation schedules. Mayor Pro Tem? Um, uh, Alderman Thompson? I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We'll now move on to our public comments. Remembering that our public comments are to be at a minimum of three minutes. There, if you keep your attention on the TV screens, are they up on the inside? I'm not sure. They're not. It's not working. Okay, well, Bernard will keep track of time just to make sure that we don't go over. Um, so I would like to invite Mr. James O'Hara to the podium, please. Say your name and your address for the record. Hey, Mr. Uh, James, you got to sit for me, Dr. Rose Springway. Yeah. I was going to talk about the police department. Uh, I put mobility. Ideal police force. An ideal police force would be probably about 20 to 32 police officers in the town. Uh, last time I was here, we had about 16 police officers. Uh, right now, we've got about 14. Uh, road police officers, we pretty much lost two on the road. We had seven, now we've got five. We've got five detectives, but now we've got two of them on the road. We've got a training officer, he's on the road, evidence officer. He's on the road. 
and the two lieutenants. I'm not quite sure what they do. We also have two uh, candidates, and I really can't call them officers. Uh, right now, we're losing. We're losing senior officers due to lack of pay increase. And somehow or another, we would have set something up like a pay scale retention, for example. Uh, and don't go by these figures. Say like 45,000 once they completed the first year, 42,000 or 47,000 if they completed the second year, 49,000 after the third year, and continuously something to work forward, work toward as it continued. Uh, you'd probably keep them a little bit longer instead of uh, this here just being a, a training location because they're here and they're moving on. Uh, this thing about the fire department, I've never, never really heard about sleep time. I'm sure it's probably something going on. I'm really interested, maybe help can give me some information on that. I'd really be looking forward to uh, receiving some, some information on that. I'm sure the chief would come up with something that can uh, let me know about towns outside that provide that kind of function. Uh, you got my information. Uh, see, I still have time. Uh, continue to lose offices, basic, you will cause us to, how do you say, not talk, not produce, in other words, uh, people will not move here. Can you understand what I'm saying? <coughs> but uh, I think basically I got my point across. And uh, I shall have three minutes over, but every time I left over to the next minute. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I would now like to invite Mr. Henry Ponder to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Mr. Henry Ponder. I live at 1620 Mack Street here in Spring Lake, North Carolina. I was here a couple of weeks ago and talked about a rezoning issue that they were having behind my neighborhood. I attended a meeting on the 19th of March of the joint, Cumberland County Joint Planning Board. And I think you all may already know what that decision was on it. <clears throat> well, my question is, I was, uh, there was a letter sent out by the town of Spring Lake letting us know that that was being, there was a cancellation of that rezoning. The ironic thing is all my neighbors got this letter except for me. And I was wondering why. I know you can't answer these questions at this three minute intersection, but what I would like to request is that when someone approached the board and asked for questions, that someone in the town would respond to those questions and give us an answer to those questions. Okay? Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll now move on to our presentations. Um, our first one will be from myself. It is a proclamation acknowledging uh, the month of April being the Child Abuse <laughs> Prevention and Awareness Month. Uh, the proclamation is in the agenda packet that was emailed out, um, and it will be posted on our website for the sake of time. I will not read the entire proclamation uh, because there are two of them. Uh, <laughs> so again, we know that child abuse is wrong and that every single person should take proper steps to be a part of the solution. Um, one of the models that this board lives by is see something, say something, do something, and that applies to protecting our children, even the children that are not yours. Every child deserves to be protected. So um, beyond heightened awareness, you'll see uh, our pinwheels planted uh, right at the intersection of uh, Bright Boulevard and Lillington Highway. Uh, we partnered up with our police department and the, or the, excuse me, the Child Advocacy uh, Center 
here in Cumberland County to do a pinball pledging. This is our second year of uh, participating as the town. Um, our police department has participated for several years, so we definitely want to commend them and, our, and the Child Advocacy Center uh, thanks them profusely for their um, participation, not just with pinball planting, but with being proactive in protecting our children. So again, this is Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month, so please be mindful of that. If you'd like to, to uh, plant pinwheels at, in your home or um, in your place of business, feel free to reach out to the Cumberland, or excuse me, to the Child Advocacy Center. Um, and they will, they have packages for you to purchase pinwheels in support of the cause and show um, your support in child abuse prevention and awareness. So we will um, carry on with our next presentation. It's an Earth Day proclamation uh, from Aldrin Hospice. Thank you, Mayor. So the Earth Day proclamation is in your packets and the idea here is Earth Day, of course, is a time that we set aside to think about the sustainability that we have and, uh, of course, do our part to preserve the plants. <laughs> and one way we are accomplishing that is on the 20th of April, we are holding a Earth Day cleanup for the town. And the Earth Day cleanup allows the town and its shareholders to come in and help beautify the town through litter pickup, get rid of e-waste items, meditation drop-off will be there, and tire drop-off, wolf drop-off, those kind of things. So, um, thank you, Mayor. Absolutely. Keep Spring Lake clean in your homes, even if you don't live in Spring Lake. Oh, and I'm sorry, can I add, uh, the Earth Day cleanup is 9 a.m. <coughs> at the rec center across the street is where we'll meet and disperse. 9 a.m. April 20th. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> awesome. Help us help the planet. Did anybody get a chance to speak of the planet on Earth Day? Did anybody get a chance to see the eclipse today? It was, it was actually phenomenal. Uh, to see the eclipse, so I hope you guys had a chance to see that. That's, that's my Earth Day clip. <laughs> all right, now, oh, yay, I love this part. Um, our Sigma Beta Club, that's all these distinguished gentlemen here in the blue, um, they have a presentation. So I would like to invite Dr. Tyrone Short, he's the director of the Sigma Beta Club, to the podium um, for this wonderful presentation. Good evening. Good evening. For those of you who do not know me, I am Dr. Tyrone Short. I am the director for our Sigma Beta Club here in Spring Lake, North Carolina, under the direction of Alpha Alpha Gamma Sigma, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to present this presentation to you. Mayor Anthony and your distinguished board of aldermen who I love so dearly. AKA Dream Team. <laughs> March 22nd, 2024, the March 24th, we took a group of 17 young men to Columbia, South Carolina. And we was in the running for a number of awards. Well, some we got, we got one award, we got Sigma Beta Club of the Year. Awesome. And then we got Sigma Beta Club for the region. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of hard work, we raised every dime on our own. Thank you for some of the audience who helped and supported. Did plate sales, calendar sales, we did all types of stuff to raise these funds for these young men to get that experience. Grades were on point. We work hard on that as well. I'd rather have them with me than in the streets. Amen. We would like to present this certificate to share this certificate with you, with the mayor and the aldermen of Spring Lake. All these young men are in Spring Lake. It says Alpha Alpha Gamma Sigma Southeastern Region Sigma Beta Club of the Year. The men of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity of the Southeastern Region. We would like to give this to you, Mayor um, Anthony, and our president right now we're gonna, is going to present this to you, Rodney Burnside. Awesome. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. <laughs> the, the, the older men that you see standing out here are advisors. 
We also have our chapter president, Brother Kevin Ricks. And we want to thank you for this presentation. Thank you all so much. And do you want the moment? After, I was going to say, after this picture, can we get everybody together? So we can, you know, we like our flag. And so we, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Awesome. So can we kind of come up here and grab a picture? Yes. I'm not ashamed. just like to comment that we think we have an idea of your statement of purpose and we'd like to reinforce that statement of purpose tonight and what we will address is Spring Lake our town our future and notably building continuity into the town of Spring Lake and I'd like to say a few words of introduction about my colleagues back here again as our slides are coming up Charles Hayes. Charles, if you could stand quickly. Charles Hayes is a managing partner of Hayes Group. Now, what's interesting about Charles, he was born in uh, Norlina, Warren County, very small rural area. Charles actually became county manager of Warren County when he was still in his 20s after coming back from Vietnam. I met Charles 25 years ago when he was CEO of the Research Triangle Region. And what's notable about that for our comments tonight is Research Triangle Region has been a leader in economic development planning for our state and really beyond. And uh, the Research Triangle Region, when Charles was CEO, comprised of very urban and very rural places. 
how those very urban and very, very rural places work together is something that Charles was able to, to champion. Jan Hayes, whom you just met, uh, notably Jan is uh, involved in the governor's uh, Rural Infrastructure Committee. How do we get resources to rural communities in order for them to, to grow and prosper? She also has a lot of community college experience, notably Central Carolina Community College, which is headquartered in Lee County, Sanford, but also has uh, satellites, and also with United Way. So a lot of community passion, as well as passion for rural communities. Uh, Julian Philpott, uh, Julian, if you could also identify yourself. Julian has a long background with Farm Bureau. He was actually the um, lobbyist and general counsel for Farm Bureau. What's notable about that? is how do we champion and serve as advocates for agribusiness, for rural counties, and the like. And Julian has brought that sense of champion, how do we champion communities to, to our work. Finally, my background is I've, I've been involved in strategy for 30 years. I was with NC State University for 26 years, worked closely with agricultural extension, industrial extension, and economic development outreach. My job at NC State was to help places create strategies that work for them, notably economic development strategies. Now, I'll just say one thing in, in closing in terms of our introduction. Charles is a senior fellow for East Carolina University, and he's, he's actually helped East Carolina University establish an economic development academy. And that economic development academy is how we got here. Charles ran a session for Cumberland County, much like we're going to propose to you tonight. And, and with Cumberland County brought together those thought leaders and influencers uh, on behalf of Cumberland around the topic of economic development. Charles is, is still involved with East, East Carolina University, as am I. I actually am an instructor with that program. Now, I don't know if we have any slides, and you also have hard copies, I think. Of, what, of, of my remarks. Let me just uh, continue, if the slides catch up, <laughs> terrific. Now again, we're, we want to emphasize the statement of purpose. And that statement of purpose is to build continuity, to build the future of Spring Lake. I think we're, what we bring is a way to work on a common ground, have a common ground on which to work together. And that common ground is economic development. Now, over the past four or five years, we've worked with over 25 counties and a number of municipalities across North Carolina. Each body that we work with, be it a body of county commissioners or a board of aldermen or a town council, folks are not always of the same party. They don't always share the same views and opinions. But the common ground that we have found is a love of our place. And, and that love of place can be actualized around economic development. And that's what we're really proposing to you all. Now, we're, we're actually proposing a one day vision to action session that will be similar to what was conducted for Cumberland County, but it would be much more of a customized approach for the town of Spring Lake. Now, that focus on economic development, as we would uh, propose, you would invite key people, key thought leaders, including yourselves, to this, to this event. And that, that could include elected officials, government officials, certainly department heads who had your, your, your uh, town government, in industry and business leaders, uh, chamber of commerce folks, education leaders, community college, and others that uh, could attend, and, and, then, and then citizens, any citizens that would like to attend. We would encourage that. So that is what we're talking about, and if the slides catch me up, great. If not, I'll continue on. The, the vision to action session will be a very designed day. We probably envision about six hours, about six hours. So you have time before and time after to take care of business. And also we'll, we will recognize uh, 
your schedule in terms of designing that time. So in, that, in this day that we're talking about, there are specific outcomes, takeaways, that we will ensure happen. Well, look at that. <laughs> Let me skip past Charles's picture. Uh, so yeah, right there's a good spot. This is, this, you caught me up. The actual outcomes and takeaways we tried to capture on, on this slide. The two most important are number one and number two. We envision probably 15, 20, or 25 folks attending. That's a lot of times what we entertain. They will be energized. It will not be a lecture. It will be a very interactive session. But the key outcomes will be a greater understanding of what economic development is and what it is not. Sometimes we have expectations or unrealistic aspirations for economic We'll, we'll make sure that it's relevant for spring work. So there will be a takeaway is greater understanding across all of our viewpoints of an economic development. The second major takeaway is a much better understanding of strategy, strategic planning. I know you all have engaged a strategic plan starting last year. We, we read the draft of that. Uh, strategic planning can be complicated. We strive to uncomplicated, and I'll talk about that in a second. Some further outcomes just for your, your record. We want to build on what you've started, your draft vision, your draft mission, your, your draft actions. We want to build on that, not lose it. We want to talk about the best practices of economic development for Spring Lake, not for some other place. There are parallels. We'll talk about some of those. But what is distinctive here? that we can really build upon in terms of economic development. The vision and mission that you've staked out, we want to apply that to our time that we uh, propose. We'll also engage the folks, the thought leaders who come together in some critical thinking. What, what might be working about economic development in Spring Lake, what is not working, importantly, what is needed for economic development in Spring Lake. And also we might entertain what's an innovation something, what are we missing? What haven't we thought about that we could think about? This would be a, a direct takeaway. We will also look at next steps for any kind of longer term planning process. And we'll give you a real idea of what that would look like in this day that we have together. Now, this is probably the most important takeaway, number eight. And all the work that we've done over 30 years with all kinds of strategic planning, just those terms strategic planning leave some people sort of dry or confused. What, we're really, what we've really seen work, if it's at the county level or the, the town level, is creating a champion's plan. How do we tell our story? How do we inspire and incite others about our plan? We've got, people would be engaged all along the way in developing the plan. Once we have the plan, we have not only a plan but using the plan to create champions. Now, very quickly, this would be the agenda that we propose for our one-day vision action session. Again, what is economic development, what is it not? Very importantly, we want to look at the businesses, the target industries, the careers that might be most likely to manifest here in Spring Lake. So number three, place-based economic development it would be specifically for and about Spring Lake. We would get very much into the three ways to grow. Is it attracting the next big company? Is it starting a small business? Is it creating more of an entrepreneurial spirit? Is it helping to champion, again, the industries that are here? So what are the ways to grow the economy in Spring Lake? Number five is kind of a funny word, the triple helix. This is something Charles sort of coined out of his work in the research triangle, but most importantly, how does government, industry, and education work together? And we have many great examples. When that occurs, everyone's on the same page, it is much more likely for a place to grow and, and prosper. We'll also look at how to make it work. If, if the town decides to invest in economic development in whatever way, if it's staff, if it's personnel, if it's initiatives, 
how do we know we're getting return on that? What are some examples of returns? Now, as we round out our time, we would look at number seven at the major external factors that may be affecting spring load. Now, folks, I just finished a year, year and a half project with a major manufacturing company. Their real concern is it was a 2030 strategic plan. Their real concern is artificial intelligence, AI, and all of the ways in which that's going to change our lives, our working, and our businesses. So, what are those major factors that are happening all around us that will affect spring light? And then again, number eight, we want to look specifically what's working, what's not working, what's needed. And then we will apply all the learning we have through this day that we're proposing into specific next steps. Now, very quick uh, mention here. We talk a lot about economic development. We talk a lot about economic growth. And there are differences in those terms. What we really want to key on for Spring Lake is economic competitiveness. How does Spring Lake be competitive with others around us? How do we be competitive? What you see on this one slide are really the elements of economic development. Everything from skilled workforce, and that's much on the mind today, skilled workforce, to physical infrastructure. How do we, how do we focus on downtown? How do we revitalize downtown? That's infrastructure. It's also a destination, a place that can people can coalesce and say, this is Spring Lake. How do we do that? That's infrastructure. Quality of place, very much tied to that. Supply of capital, cost of doing business like taxes, investment in, in research and development. Those are all components of economic development now. Here's the most important. Leadership and government. What I've read about you all on the way down here indicates some real momentum here. And I will, I will underscore it with this slide. We've done a lot of leadership development work with a lot of different types of groups. It comes down to this. How do we work together? How do we trust each other? How do we honor each other? How do we make decisions? How do we get things done? Even though we may disagree on some things, Part of the flavor I got of you all on the way down here. We actually have a, a, an assessment, an inventory called Group Lead that looks at this. Where are we good? Where do we need to improve? So all of those elements, especially sharing commitments, working together, exhibiting trust, so vital. We get that. We would infuse our day together with these leadership principles. I'll speak very quickly as I start to close out this presentation about macro trends. I mentioned this earlier. These trends are happening at a pace that is breathtaking. If it's business, if it's industry, if it's government, if it's education, the job, the, the training we're giving now for young people, those jobs may not exist in five or 10 years. That's how fast things are changing. Particularly on, the, on this list, well, we know the nature of work is changing. Some of that's related to the pandemic. But remote work, there's a lot of things that we have to position for in an economic development plan. But artificial intelligence, AI, robotics, incredible. Now, you might say in the future, it could come down to something like this. Here's a couple of AI, here's an AI couple at dinner. And one says to the other, well, that's crazy. My parents are right, it might include research. Are there towns like Spring Lake? Are there models out there who, let's say, are close to a military operation, and what have they done? We know some, by the way. What, what have they done? In addition, discovery is talking to all those folks, those, those thought leaders in the town, and asking them what they think about key questions for the future of Spring Lake. Basically, it comes down to, what is it we need to know that we don't know? That's discovery. And how do we really optimize our assets and meet our challenges? That's discovery. The next phase in a planning process is actually developing strategies. Now, the strategies have to be, in terms of economic development especially, high return strategies. And, and because we can't do everything. A lot of times with economic development plans, it becomes a, a, a bulletin board wish list. And it simply can't be all be done. What are the high return strategies for Spring Lake that we have capacity to realize? 
So that's how we, that's strategy development. Now, that stra once, once we have a plan, how do we execute it, how do we deploy it? That's the hard part. This is where most plans fail. Mo you walk into any county in this state, many municipalities, the strategic plans are still on the shelf. Some I helped develop years ago. They're still on the shelf. We, we would want to ensure that that's not the case with Spring Lake. And then how do we measure? How do we know we're being successful? What's, a, what's our key performance indicators? What's our metrics? That's, that's a one page on strategy. That's a whole strategy process on one page. Now, uh, starting to draw to a close here, just to draw a parallel that we thought of on the way down here. About five years ago, we helped Moore County develop a countywide economic development plan. What is no, there are two things right off the bat that's noteworthy. If you look at, if you can see number two where it says county brand, what, what Moore County wanted to do with their economic development plan was to inspire and excite people internally and externally. That's the purpose of the plan to, to, to uh, really uh, uh, optimize the brand of that place and inspire people. The next thing that's really of note is number four, defense and military businesses and military uh, people. How, how can Spring Lake really tap into this enormous pool of assets that, that are military people, military families, military businesses adjacent to Fort Liberty all that? Now, I just mentioned very quickly, we did a plan for the town of Sanford, and there's some, uh, what you might notice there, they had a vision that said, we want to be the most creative, livable, and working downtown in America. Now, that's a big, audacious vision, but that's what they staked out. And they said, we want to champion downtown Sanford. Now, further what's uh, a parallel for you, number two, economic vitality. So we're helping Sanford in terms of growing that economic vitality. Now, let me just say that these two, these two uh, one-pagers, this is the strategic plan. This is the strategic plan for Moore County on a page. This is the strategic plan for the town of Sanford on a page. Now, I'll talk about that in a second. In terms of executing a plan, we always, and this will be covered during our vision to action session, we encourage very much a discipline, a kind of protocol around that. We call it an action matrix, and, and it's created in uh, Google Docs or real, Live Docs or Excel. It just depends on, on the, the choice. But it is a formal, intentional uh, effort to actually execute a plan so that all that effort is not wasted. Now, what we, what we propose for our day is that before that day-long retreat, we would work closely with you all to further customize our day. And we would make sure that uh, we understand the businesses and the industries that, that you see that are important. We would do some other research for Cumberland County, the Southeast region, the state of North Carolina to see what would impact Spring Lake. And then we would formalize a design of our six hours, put it back in front of you, and get your sign up on that. We would conduct our retreat, let's say the six hours, in a, hello, in a highly interactive way. We, we, uh, we would engage in uh, critical thinking. We would also, um, hang on, I've got it right here. We would make sure that you come away with some key focus areas where you can, now in your draft strategic plan, I think you said you want to identify priorities for economic development during this year, by December, certainly. That's going to be part of the outcome of this day. What are those priorities? Now, if you look at what we did for Moore County, that we provided our one-page uh, one capsule, or for Sanford, you get a flavor that says, okay, we want to pay attention to leadership, we want to pay attention to branding, we want to pay attention to attracting industry, to retaining industry, to entrepreneurship, those kinds of major focus areas, we would, we would help you uh, focus on. Now, po post-retreat, after the retreat's over, we will provide you a, a, a formal summary report. We will have you writing on flip charts, writing on pages, talking together. We'll be recording everything that occurs 
We will capture as much as we can, feed it back to you, so nothing's lost. And just that alone will be a major takeaway. Now, a couple more slides and I'm through. Once you have a plan, as Moore County does, as Sanford does, and many other places, we will look for ways during our time together for you to use that plan to tell your distinctive story, the Spring Lake story. And that's what the plan helps, helps you do. Once, once you have a plan, you can actually show the plan to folks and say, this is what, this is our story. This is our history. These are our people. These are our communities. These are our dreams. We want our children and grandchildren to, to live here, to come back here. This is Spring Lake. The other um, point that we would like to make is, I said this earlier, we'll come away with more than a strategic plan. It will be a champion's plan. And that champion's plan will enable you, as the key leadership, to gain champions for the cause of Spring Lake. Let me close out with one of my favorite philosophers, maybe my very favorite Yogi Berra played for the New York Yankees back in the 1950s and 60s. Yogi Berra, who said many things like, that place is so popular nobody goes there anymore. In addition, Yogi said, the future ain't what it used to be. And in no time was that more true than now. And Yogi also said, predictions are hard, especially when they're about the future. So with that, our thanks. We would be glad to entertain any questions that you might have at all at a, now or at another time. Okay, thank you so much uh, for a very well put together detailed presentation. Um, I got a chance to uh, learn directly from, from Mr. Hayes um, in the um, Eastern Eastern Carolina uh, Strategic Planners Honors Session with Cumberland County um, Economic Development, which is where I met this amazing group. Um, and I was absolutely blown away by how much knowledge was packed into that one session, which was just a few hours that I could not resist uh, bringing them to Spring Lake to see what they could do with hyper-focused and specialized eyes on our town. So uh, thank you for, for putting this together for us. Uh, is there any questions or discussions from the board? No? Very good. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We will continue on to, on to our new business. Take your drive safe. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for coming. Um, agenda item 8A, eight, eight adopt the draft policy according to our conflict of interest policy. So um, we have this in here because we have received state funding um, from funding from the state budget. Um, our allocations were uh, $250,000 for um, computer software. We received another $400,000 for uh, Mudsburg Park plan updates or um, potentially for our natural gas line. And we also received another $300,000 appropriation for uh, stormwater infrastructure updates. Uh, in order for us to receive these funds from the state, we have to have a conflict of interest uh, policy adopted by the town. We do not have one as of now. Uh, and so the draft was um, created and we needed to go ahead and review and approve it. Um, so I will not entertain any questions or discussion from the board. Hearing them, I'll not entertain a motion to approve. Oh, was that discussion? Okay. May I present? Um, thank you, ma'am. Um, so in reading this, um, I know that employees uh, board members and everybody, is this going to be something we have them sign every year or how is that going to work to um, make sure that this is fresh in everyone's mind? Like if you would like to um, elect an official when we sign a new one at the start of a new re-election, how would you do that? No, I do believe that this is just for the appropriation of funding from the state. Um, <coughs> it's not, I don't think, is this one, Something we had to, to review yearly. I didn't think so. This is this this is just one of the guidelines. This is just one of the guidelines that had to be done in order to receive the funds. 
So um, the state sent a checklist of uh, what we need to do, the steps that we need to take in order to um, appropriate the funds from the state. One of those, one of the criteria was having a conflict of interest policy. Um, there wasn't anything stating that we needed to renew it every year. Um, that's why we're adopting it via resolution. So, yes. So, um, it seems like an on, it would be an ongoing thing that we would be getting monies from the um, state. So, why would this not be an ongoing report of the attorneys? Yeah, I, I, I think what this really is is stopping a permit policy to an amendment or altered it at some later date. That's which right. Would be five, ten years from now. So, all current employees and officials and board members would need to have to get a copy of it. You don't have to have them sign if they have a copy of it. Um, and then any new hire or new board member or one of our positions would have to be made aware of it. But it's just a, a resolution like, hey, if you violate this, yeah. that's a conflict. But, but 10.9 says uh, everybody has, that's what, so I'm wondering if you need to change that wording because. 10.9 says all municipal officials, employees, and volunteers are required to acknowledge in writing that they have read, understand, and agree to comply with the conflict of interest policy. So, That's a one time thing, by the way. For, okay. any, like, for any new board member or a new hire, you would have to do it yearly. Okay, I just want to be, I just want to know how we were going to do that. I, I don't know if we need to put that in there as an addendum or if it's good this way. Just want to. I, I think it's okay this way. We just add an acknowledgement after it and have it in the packet of stuff that everybody signs, have all the employees sign, have all of us sign. Mm -hmm. Right. I just, I mean, I think there needs to be somewhere for the employee to sign that says you have to sign. Well, I don't think it has to be literally attached to this resolution. I understand no, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. We'll just draft up an acknowledgement. But I understand exactly what you're saying. Like, yeah. we're literally right here, but that's because this is the actual resolution. Okay. I, yeah. Thank you. Other questions? All right, I will now entertain a motion to adopt a resolution, or excuse me, uh, to adopt the draft policy uh, 42, the conflict of interest policy. Uh, on the woman Thompson. So mm -hmm. Mayor Ernst. Uh, <laughs> woman Chadwick, I'm I going to <laughs> stop calling you Mayor for a <laughs> uh, Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at you. Yeah. Any opposed? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the motion carries to approve or to adopt the draft policy for the QR conflict of interest policy. <coughs> All right. Um, agenda <coughs> item 8B, resolution 2024-8, which is a resolution of intent to consider an ordinance um, amending the charter of the town of Spring Lake to change the length of terms for the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor of the Town of Spring Lake from two years to four years and changing the ald changing aldermen to commissioners and setting the date for the public hearing. So, um, Alderman Thompson. Is your light still left on? Okay, so not Alderman Thompson. <laughs> Alderman Plasius. Thank you, Mayor. So, this was brought before the Board in November and we agreed to move forward with it. And this is just the next step. It's been five months. Time to take some action if we're going to do this. And uh, just to reiterate the resolution of intent, it is to move the board, including the mayor, to from a two-year service to a four-year service, effective at the next election, not this current board, and to move the board of aldermen to a board of commissioner. Uh, as we discussed, it was to uh, go to a more gender neutral neutral term and uh, allow for an easy to understand, you know, title. Uh, and so, what we're doing tonight, just for the public, uh, is approving or reviewing. I said voting on this resolution of intent. The, and a call to a public hearing. The public hearing will be April 22nd at 5.30 p.m. before our regular board meeting. And at that board meeting to follow, we will uh, make a vote on whether this is gonna be adopted or not to change the town charter to this. 
Uh, and uh, so what we're doing tonight is not making this official, it's our intent to consider it. And uh, any questions from the board? No, I just asked. I was uh, making sure that we didn't need um, more than one public hearing on this, but it's clear we only need one public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So per the, I'm sorry, not to cut off the attorney. I, I think we just need, I mean, technically one date, but maybe two separate actual notices going out, like there's going to be this discussion and then this discussion. They're technically separate. Yeah, and so when we were working on this, just so it's clear. Um, I think the resolution's fine. Yeah. yeah, so the general statute, one one sixty dash 102 when it gave guidance on this, it just says amendments. Mm -hmm. It didn't say that it had to be separate. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the only reason why you see it this way. Just to follow that. So thank yeah, you, Mr. I, Porter. Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, obviously, there's two subject matters discussed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is it two or three? So because the mayor it's three. needs its own three. Three. And I may, so the mayor needs its own, the board needs its own, and then the name, name change. So it'll be three instead of two. Yeah, exactly. yeah you're right. <laughs> I when, I, when, I say, when I say board, I, I think of the mayor. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are these lights on for questions? Okay. Yes. All the relax. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mayor. And and the terms on this is there's not standard terms. Yeah. It is a, a straight election that's held on there. So every four, if this goes through every four years, you are voting for the entire board, not not a split vote on the board. Mayor Brother? Oh, the right one. Oh. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, uh, um, Alderman Lat um, last year, so I had a funny conversation. Uh, I'm happy to be voting, hopefully, to change our titles to commissioners because Alderman means old man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, you know, when I first got elected and I saw that, you know, I didn't say anything, but uh, like, that's why I immediately changed my title to Alder Long Line. But it's still <laughs> that old woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I too. Um, <laughs> I'm excited about making this change. It's just, you know, you can, it's kind of getting old explaining what an alderman yeah, is. Yeah. People are absolutely clueless. Um, but again, with the term change, uh, not only is it going to provide more stability, uh, but it's also going to be a cost savings because elections cost money. Um, it's a small cost savings, but every penny counts. Um, and that's funding that we can put back in our general fund to use um, in another place. It's, so, just, it's funny because it's just going to cost the um, elected officials some money because of all the yard signs you got to replace <laughs> if this happens. Anybody interested in money? <laughs> Oh, awesome. So uh, if there is no further discussion, I'll entertain motion to approve the resolution 2024-A-8. Excuse me. All the lights blow up. Mayor <laughs> Uh So moved. All the applause here. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries your name this way. I love that. Awesome. Let's keep it level. We are now on agenda item 8C, which is our mayor's report, which is very brief. However, I uh, would like to take a point of privilege to introduce two um, of Spring Lake's newest additions. Mm -hmm. um, we have our newly uh, hired, uh, who will be starting on May 1st, our new town manager, Mr. John Murray, if you could stand. <laughs> We also have our interim police chief, Mr. I don't want to, is it Errol? Errol. I didn't want to tear your first name up. Errol Jarman. Thank you for coming in here. To all of you. So again, I'm so glad that you guys could be here. Um, again, Mr. Rory will be starting on May 1st. Um, and we have our interim police chief. So um, Spring Lake is moving forward. I know it was, it was a little scary for a second, um, but we are doing everything we can to keep this town on the right track and moving in the right direction. And these two new additions are absolutely a step in the right direction. So thank you for your desire um, to come to Spring Lake. 
Um, as we talked about earlier, the most important thing is, you know, wanting to be here. Um, and you guys have proven that you want to be here, and so we're so glad to have you. Um, I also like to send out some birthdays to all our spring babies. Um, April 1st, Miss Maria um, is having her birthday. Uh, Jamal Reynolds and Police, um, Thomas Spinks and in Inspections, David Tripp and Fire, and Brian Hessler and Fire. Um, so I just like to say happy birthday to each and every one of them. Happy birthday to our employees. Um, lunch with the mayor is on 417. We will be at the end of the month. I believe myself, Alderman Woman Chadwick, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, I know that. I was trying to remember if they were going to. We'll be out of town going to City Vision. And so uh, City Vision is a conference held by the North Carolina League of Municipalities. Um, and that's where we go to get lots and lots of training, um, provide some much needed resources. And then we bring all of that stuff back to the community to keep us growing and moving forward. Um, and so at the end of the month, we'll be attending that. So we're moving or, excuse me, lunch with the mayor um, to April 17th at Mikasitas at 12 p.m. Um, so feel free to join me. This weekend, I had the absolute pleasure and the most hard job ever of picking uh, a car. At Pastor England's uh, First Baptist, they had their annual car show this weekend. You guys, if you didn't get a chance to go out and see all those fabulous cars, you absolutely missed a, a great time. Um, so I, I passed the book, and I picked out my top three and told my daughter, she's got to pick the winner. Um, and she did. She picked a beautiful uh, wine-colored Mustang. And it was just absolutely phenomenal. So thank you for inviting me to uh, share and be a part of that and select the mayor's choice for car. Um, also, as I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, the Pimmel planting. So if you haven't had a chance to stop by, drive through, and check out our Pimmel planting, uh, we will be doing this again next year and hopefully every year um, following. So if you want to be a part of the Pimmel planting just next spring, make sure that you stay connected. Um, come out there and plant some Pimmels with us. And that is all I have. Mayor Corson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. So uh, April 2nd, uh, early in the morning, uh, Alderman Palacios and I were actually on Goldie, the BFNC. Uh, I think both of us have shared it on our Facebook page and it's on Spring Lake Matters. So it talks about some things that are going on. Uh, so check that out if you get a chance. Um, and also, as the Mayor said, We'll be going to City Vision where we uh, <coughs> go in and not only do we learn from the sessions, but we also learn from uh, those that are there, other elected officials and managers and clerks. We learn from them because we can sit and have conversations. So I'm excited about that. And um, I am also, uh, I do a monthly um, meeting with a, a gentleman named Matt Blairman who has a social prosperity podcast and uh, we talk about, you know, sometimes we talk about incivility in um, in um, our space and I'm going to be on his podcast, I believe, next month. So I'll share that actual uh, recording once he has it. And that's all I have. All I'm going to have All I'm going to have Mayor, you know I always got something to talk oh, about. Oh, and you've got a great shirt too. Well, I'll explain that here in, in, in a quick minute. Yeah. But um, this past Saturday, we had cleanup. And as you look up there, you can see what five people did. Five people cleaned, cleaned up throughout the town, many streets throughout there. We had Dr. Dickerhoff, one of his, his assistants, Savannah Davis, which you'll see pictured up there. All of that was, and you can see where Dr. Dickerhoff is taking the picture. So he, he's kind of slide and tries to hide in there, but we were able to capture at least his shadow <laughs> in the picture of what him and Savannah did behind First and Second Street there on, on the church. They worked real hard. Uh, you see the you saw the rest of what we did <laughs> uh, throughout the town. And, and that's anywhere over there on the top to fifth and sixth to, to paint to Grog Street throughout the, the whole area over there. So one of the things that, since I've got an audience and attention out here, Alderman Palacios and I cleaned up the basketball court over there. 
There were so many plastic bottles, so many drink bottles. There are so many trash cans over there. But the but the individuals that, that want to play, and we encourage them to go out there and play basketball. But when you're done, clean up the, the rest of it so everyone else can have a nice park over there to, to play basketball in. Also, we have lots of parking spots over at the recreation center. Don't park your vehicles over on the basketball court. There is not much grass to start with, but it doesn't need to be there. We also have residents that, that live back there. The last thing that they want to hear is a boom boom of somebody's music back there. The basketball courts are there to be enjoyed. Please enjoy them, but do so respectfully. Thank you. Um, also, after we finish cleaning up, Alderman Palacios and I, uh, we drove out to the tractor supply store over there, and we saw the Sand Hills Family Heritage Association out there cleaning up the, the cemetery over there. And what did two good aldermen do? <laughs> we had our vest on, he has gloves on. We got out there and we moved some wood. We, we helped him out there, enjoyed some, some free lunch on, on their account and, and helped him clean up the area. So I know they were glad to see us, but, but we were glad to work and, and to talk with them as we were working out there. And if Carly wants to pull up the next one, and it says, Mayor, I know you didn't miss the car show at First Baptist Church. Alderman Palacios and I again stopped off there as well. <laughs> there were some beautiful vehicles there. <laughs> Pastor Steve England, I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> I know that you had talked that you had 50, you were, you had cards for 40 that you were open. You got 50 some out there. But Spring Lake had their fire truck sitting on the outside. You didn't have a class for for best fire truck <laughs> next, year. next year. I saw they sitting outside there, and we just wondered if you didn't let them in, or, or or if they didn't pay their fee. If they didn't, I would be glad to, to take care of that. But um, anyway, just wanted to tell you thanks. That that was a good that was a good event. Uh, a good time for the residents to come out there, see some of the, the vehicles that people had, but also to have a little fellowship and, and get to know folks. So uh, thank you for putting that on. Kind of stalling a little bit, hoping that, that Carly will get the pictures up here again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but also, Alderman Palacios and I again, it was kind of uh, our day, I guess, together. But we stopped off at PetSense, saw the grand opening at Skyland, Ash, Ash is a rock star. That's, that's all they talked about was, was Ash stopped by over there. So she had a good time while, while they were there. And talked to Todd Bird. He's the PetSense store manager. And he took some time just to talk to us. He's excited to be here in Spring Lake. Glad to be able to provide service to, to the residents here. So that's that's awesome. Um, the Spring Lake Banner Program, you know, I would be remiss to not talk about that. but. This Friday, Friday is the last day for the banner program for you all to come in. Uh, we've got a few sold, not as many as I had hoped, um, but this Friday you'll come in, or before, see Bernard or, or Miss Hickman, and pay your, your dues, put in your application, digital picture, and I am so excited about this, having, having the military banners fly on Main Street from, better, from Memorial Day through Veterans Day. This is gonna be a, a great thing that we've got out there. Applications can be found online, or you can come in and see Bernard. Bernard will have those available, and he will even assist you in filling those out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Carly, we're coming closer to the picture. No. <laughs> no? Sorry. All right. All right. It's taken. All right. Very All right. Well. I'm, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. Saturday was Daddy Daughter Day. I have to, I have to see a picture of Adrian with her father at, at the car show. Oh. And so we take those pictures. We're going to come up. Oh. We're going to show Adrian and her dad there. I just thought that was was awesome. Uh, also, we always talk about Alderman Palacios and his singing ability. I see. I don't know <laughs> that, but, but we've got someone that's sounds like a karaoke night. And so. In regards to the shirt and the rose, when the first rose comes out, that is, that is to be given out. I, I kind of like to wear my rose shirt and, and just be a, a signifying thing that spring is here. And so we are, are losing one of our sergeants today. Sergeant Hoffman is her last day with the Spring Lake Police Department. And she was out on a call 
But this rose here is for Sergeant Hoffman. This oh, is called okay. Sheila's Perfume. Nice. It's got a wonderful intoxicating fragrance. And so when she does make her way up here, this rose is for Sergeant Hoffman for her, her duty since 2020 with the Spring Lake Police Department. Oh, okay. so, Almost to the end, but Spring Lake has, we keep talking about turning the corner. Mayor, we've turned the corner. And we now, we, now we know which direction we're going. We, we know where that is at. So I want to leave you with one last saying is Spring Lake is the gateway to Fort Liberty. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's, That's, it. it. Okay. That's it for me, Mayor. Thank you. All the class here. Thank you, Mayor. So the next appearance committee meeting is Wednesday, April 10th at 4 p.m. at the rec center across the street. There we will discuss and make the final decisions on our next wall mural design. All are invited to attend these meetings where we can make plans and action steps to beautify our town and help restore some Spring Lake pride. Uh, the Earth Day cleanup is at 9 a.m. at the rec center. Said that already. And as a reminder, the Greater Sand Hills Chamber of Commerce won a $15,000 grant by the Arts Council of Fayetteville, Cumberland County to help our efforts in expanding the Spring Lake Arts Trail. The public is invited to sign up and help paint the mural like we did last time. So whether or not you are artistically gifted, professional or amateur, you can help paint that day. Uh, we make it really easy to participate to sign up, go to the Greater Sand Hills Chambers website or contact Town Hall and we'll point you in the right direction. Thank you, Mayor. Board Chapman? I don't have any updates at this time. I would like to um, acknowledge our uh, Carver's Creek Park Superintendent, Ms. Holly Powers, is here in the back. Uh, yes, that's a place that you should know uh, yeah. because that, that's definitely a partnership we want to foster as much as possible because they've got 1,100 acres that we can use for something. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, did you have that one? No. <laughs> Mr. Williams? Uh, a couple things. Number one, that the picture finally up. Please ever leave this picture up here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been waiting like 15 minutes for people to come up. So, and um, Mr. Lagman, he did give us first place in, in, in fire looking things. So he gave us first place in that. Thank you for that, sir. Back there in the fire department. Appreciate that. Award. No, we didn't know. It was good, and nobody. Is happier up here. This new town manager coming in than this guy. <laughs> Just so that you know that. So yes, uh, spent the day with him today. Really good day. We kind of went over a couple things, and uh, it's going to be a huge benefit for the town and uh, and us definitely moving forward. Uh, this is the right pick. I think it's going to be great. Attorney Porter. Uh, just briefly, I'd like to uh, join everyone else and thank our new uh, or welcome our new staff. Rory and Chief Jarman. Uh, only thing, just because I know we kind of had some mention of it maybe in the closed session, but I uh, did speak to the Sheriff's Department of Attorney, uh, Andrew Porter, who's taken over from Robert Mitchell, and uh, just made contact. Nothing specific was discussed. I did want to let the board know, but uh, I've contacted them. Oh, that's Personality-wise, I think they are really <laughs> Awesome. Um, if there is nothing else, I'll now entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143318113, Attorney Client Privilege. <laughs> you guys kill <can't> me. <laughs> pursuant to NCGS 143318A, a six personnel. Every light on my board is on. I don't know who was first, so I'll go with their pro tip. So I moved Alderwoman Chapman. I said, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries to go into closed session. Thank you.